The first of Newton's three laws is that when the change in momentum is zero, momentum is conserved. This first law is often stated as an object at rest tends to remain at rest. An object in motion tends to remain in motion unless acted on by an outside force. An object at rest, such as a marble sitting here on the floor with a velocity of zero, will tend to remain at rest unless acted upon by an external force. The marble will not start moving unless some outside force, some external force, is applied to the marble. Momentum is conserved. The momentum is zero, and the momentum remains zero. For a moving object, the object will tend to remain in motion. The momentum will be conserved unless there are external forces acting. A ship such as this Kiowa ship coming into dock has a significant momentum. Even though the velocity is very low, the mass is quite large. Getting this ship to stop will require a large external force. If no force is applied, that force usually being applied by the propellers, if no force is applied, the ship will keep on traveling in the same direction, potentially in the water for many miles. Uh, it'll just simply coast in the water very slowly, but it will continue to move forward. Objects in motion do tend to remain in motion. This is a little confusing because our experience is that objects in motion tend to come to a stop, but that's because of an external force called friction. We experience a lot of friction in our daily lives. In fact, the whole reason we can walk is because of friction between our feet and the floor. If you've ever been on a wet floor, a wet tile floor in Zori's, you'll realize how important friction is. You tend to slip and fall because you've lost friction, an external force. So, things in motion do tend to remain in motion. Uh, and that is the second part of Newton's first law, unless acted on, as I said, by an external or outside force. Here I'm using external and outside interchangeably. This is Newton's first law, then. An object in motion will tend to remain in motion. An object at rest will tend to remain at rest, unless acted on by an external force. In this situation, momentum is conserved, and the change in the momentum is zero. P is a letter for momentum, so the change in the momentum, the delta P, is equal to zero, that change. If the change in momentum is not zero, then a force is acting, and we'll come to that in just a moment. Here, the ball is in motion at a constant velocity being maintained by the constant speed of the ripstick. For the cameraman, the ball is conserving momentum. The momentum is not changing for that ball. It is constant, it is non-zero, and it is not changing. The momentum of the ball is conserved. But what about for the rider, the rider on the ripstick? Is cons momentum conserved for the ball from their point of view? And the answer is yes. The person on the ripstick sees the ball is stationary, has a velocity of zero, is not moving. The person on the ripstick says the momentum is zero and stays zero. There's no change in the momentum. So both the cameraman and the rider say that momentum is conserved. They just don't agree on what that constant value of momentum is. Newton's second law is that the change in momentum is proportional to the force that has acted, the external force. In this case, the momentum of the rider and the ball comes to a stop when the uh, rider hits the wall. More accurately, the ripstick comes to a stop. 
both the ride and the ball continue on because there's no external force acting on them. The external force is actually acting on the ripstick itself. So the change in the momentum is equal to the force acting on it. And external force changes momentum and the two are proportional to each other. Newton's third law is that for every force, there's an equal and opposite counterforce. The force of the ripstick on the basalt rock is equal and opposite to the force of the basalt rock on the ripstick. They both hit each other. So Newton's third law is that for every force, there's an equal and opposite counterforce. The force of the bucket on the ground is equal and opposite to the force being exerted back on the bucket by the ground as that bucket is dragged along the ground. There are these force pairs always at work. That's Newton's third law.